Hi, everyone. Welcome to Arts for the Health of It. I'm your host, Richard Wilmore. And I'm your other host, Constanza Rader. And we have an interesting guest with us today. She, Kiria Marie is a health coach. She's based in Hawaii. And she, you would think, why do we have a health coach on? Well, she encourages her clients to engage in the arts and their creativity on a regular basis because it's important for their health and well-being. So we thought that was perfect. So we're going to talk to her all about that today. I love when people like get it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like she understands it and she's, she's implementing it into her practice. And I think that's exactly why we wanted to talk to her. Also, she's coming from, um, Hawaii. So we're all just jealous of that. Mm -hmm. and she gets to hang out there, although she's not outside today uh, because of the internet. But I will still like pretend that we're with her in Hawaii. <laughs> Living vicariously. <laughs> yes. I also um, just wanted to throw out there that June is National PTSD Awareness Month mm. um, and kind of wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. And uh, I think a lot of times you know, when I was, I swear I'll stop talking about me being in the hospital, but when I was in the hospital, <laughs> everyone kept saying like, this is going to be so traumatic. Are you like, what are you going to do to deal with the trauma of this? And I was like, whoa, what trauma? Like, I like, I'm not traumatized. Yeah. I'm just hanging out here and uh, being fed bad food. I'm like, what's the problem? Um, but it's one of those things where like, you know, I think people associate PTSD with, with war and that's kind of like, if you don't have something as traumatic as that, you don't have PTSD, but it can be, mm. it can be anything uh, that, that causes, it can be a, a, a move across the country, you know, like that you're uprooted. It can be divorce. It can be war. It can be a hospital stay. It can be anything. So, and did you know that it dates back to 50 BC? There's, it's been tracked for a long time yeah. and there's some really early literature depicting symptoms of PTSD. And yeah, trauma isn't, yes, it, it is related to a circumstance we go through, but it's really how our nervous system responds to that experience. And you go into that, that feeling of overwhelm, like the, mm -hmm. um, your senses are overwhelmed um, beyond the, your ability to cope. Um, but I love this quote by Bessel van der Kolk, who's one of the leading trauma experts uh, in the world. And he says that numerous studies of disaster response around the globe have shown that social support is the most powerful protection against becoming overwhelmed by stress and trauma. Social support is not the same as merely being in the presence of others. The critical issue is reciprocity, being truly heard and seen by the people around us, feeling that we're held in someone else's mind and heart, and that for our physiology to calm down, heal, and grow, we need a visceral feeling of safety. And no doctor can write a prescription for friendship and love, their complex and hard-earned capacities. But what we know through the arts is that the arts are a catalyst for connection, for people to really feel seen and heard and valued and cared for um, just by the very nature, the origin of, of um, like the, how our nervous system responds to the arts, especially on the receiving end. Um, it's really powerful. And, you know, the military is one of the leading um not areas, organizations, um, <laughs> groups, maybe, uh, that's leading a lot of the research and application of the arts for PTSD survivors, because it's been such a prominent problem in the military, and they're seeing such amazing results um, in PTSD recovery in combat veterans and just veterans in general, non-combat related PTSD um, through the arts and creative arts therapies. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a powerful thing. I'm glad you brought up, brought up PTSD Awareness Month, Richard. Yes. Well, you know, I did my little calendar research and that popped up and I was like, that's very important. <laughs> it is important. We need to talk about that. Yep. Um, yeah. So there's that. So I want to talk uh, really about uh, Kiria, who's here today. She creates custom health programs for each of her clients to support their natural healing process. All clients are encouraged to make self-care and creativity part of their healing routine. Some enjoy paint, others enjoy hiking, photography, dance, and they support um, each individual 
based on what they connect with, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I think that's really important when you're talking about finding an art form that you like, that it's okay to say, I, I didn't connect with, with painting and maybe I want to try something else as opposed to this is the only thing you can do. And it's just painting that's going to make you feel better. Right. But oftentimes it's not. So uh, I'm going to shut up and we're going to bring Kyria out here. Are you ready? Let's do it. Come along with me and I know you'll see that a song changes everything. Hi, Kyria. Hello, hello. Aloha, everyone. How Welcome. You? Thank you so much for having me here. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, can you tell everybody really your backstory of what you do and why you do it? Yes. So in a nutshell, um, connects a lot with the introduction that you all were talking about earlier as far as what I do and um, why I'm doing it. It really started when I was young. I've always loved health and been really passionate about it and art also. Um, ever since I was little, you know, like on the school playground and one of my friends would scuff their knee on the asphalt or whatnot, I would run. And um, I grew up on Catalina Island, which is a little island off the coast of California. And so it's like a desert island. So there's aloe vera everywhere. And I would run and get some and just patch up my friends. And um, really, though, it kind of spearheaded when my own health crashed and burned. I went to university to become a public school teacher. And then after college, went and started teaching. And much love for all the public school teachers out there. It was very hard. Um, my first year, I was sent to rural North Carolina, and I had beautiful students and loved my career, but my health just really crashed and burned. Mm -hmm. um, so all sorts of different health problems came as a result of that, and I tried to learn how to help myself feel, like from uh, depression or hormonal imbalances or disordered eating or all these different things, um, just severe stress and anxiety. And then um, none of the conventional methods are really working for me. And of course, nobody ever recommended that I try art or <laughs> that in my healing process. Um, so then I really started to work with a holistic nutritionist and she just like transformed my life. And I went back to school and got my master's degree in the subject and um, have my own practice now. And we say that we use both modern science. So things like functional blood chemistry analysis and, you know, different um, conventional methods that some might think of when they think of healing, and then also ancient wisdom. And we tie in art and creativity with that to really help the mind, the body and the spirit on, on its healing journey. Mm. Can you? Oh, yeah. Can you share a little bit about um, about that intersection? Why uh, why holistic care, like of mind, but like of your mind mm -hmm. and your spirit, affects physical health? Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, I mean, really, at the root of all disease is inflammation, right, or stress. So when we think about ways to reduce that, I mean, anything that brings us joy or helps to mitigate anxiety or fear or depression, things like art. And art itself can be, um, you know, defined in so many different ways, right? Like how you all were sharing in the introduction. For some, it could be hiking. For some, it could be painting. For some, it could be dance. So just seeing what resonates with each individual and um, kind of well, this is a little bit on a tangent, but you know, according to a lot of ancient traditions, when people start to get sick, there's four questions that like a wise elder or a sage would ask them. And the first is, when did you stop singing? And the second is, when did you stop being enchanted by storytelling? And then the third is, when did you stop dancing? And the fourth is, when did you stop being able to sit in stillness, mm. right? And this is like so deep to who we are as like these human animals, right? But really just like singing and dancing and sitting in stillness and like storytelling. These are all things that we've been doing much longer than like pharmaceuticals that even existed, right? So really tuning back into that and like using the healing power of that. And again, everybody is different, but one of my first business ideas when I was a, a student many, many years ago is like art for the heart. That's why I love this podcast. <laughs> it's the title. It's like how cool, because it just feels um, when somebody finds their own like medium, right. Or they just like exploring through whatever different ways of learning or creativity or growth and what happens. It's like that joy and then joy can help to combat dis-ease. And I love when people spell dis 
A's, like with a little dash in the middle, because that's at the root of all, you know, stress or inflammation. So we do run people's labs and we do their blood work, right? Like as nutritional consultants, we can see, okay, what's going on with somebody's lipids or with their CRP, or maybe they have an, you know, an immune imbalance or an autoimmune disease or you know, cardiovascular disease, whatever it is. But the real question is why? Like it is important to know what is going on, of course, but why is that happening? And, um, you know, in my own practice, we oftentimes see a connection between that lack of joy or that increase in stress and then like the missing component of art or even just like purpose in life and then more disease and definitely trauma is connected to. So I'm glad that you brought that up about you know, PTSD awareness month because it, it's so common for so many of our clients that they just have trauma that hasn't been addressed, right? So then to be able to use art with that can be super healing. Hmm. Can you talk a little bit about, or maybe a lot, depending on what you, <laughs> what the answer is, how, how you do use those two things together, how you do bring the arts into it. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people are like, when you, when you go into a patient's room through mm -hmm. hearts and art and they're like, what do you mean art? Like, <laughs> yeah. how's that like, what, how people what respond. That, yeah, like, what is like, that going to do? What is that going to do for me? Yes, I can't even draw a stick figure. Like, how is that supposed to make me feel better? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, well, for example, this one beautiful client that I was working with um, really wanted to get pregnant. So she was working on her fertility and her and her husband suffered through a really traumatic miscarriage. And this is before they started working with me. And then we started working together. And of course we tested her hormones. We tested her blood. You know, we saw that she needed to do like some detoxing and clearly like some stress management and was deficient in some vitamins and minerals, right? All these things that are more like, um, conventional science, which are very important. It's important to know, especially her sex hormones, like what's going on with her fertility, but there was something deeper going on too. So as we continue to work together to see, okay, what exactly is out of balance? Of course, we gave her some supplements, some herbs, um, you know, some healing remedies, things like that. But we also recognized that she was really still struggling from the trauma of the miscarriage, which of course mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, but nobody had ever talked to her or maybe been willing to go there with her before. So we started talking about that and we asked like, what could she do maybe with creativity to focus on healing that? Um, you know, some people would think of it as like a ritual or like a ceremony or, um, you know, forgiveness or gratitude or whatever it might be. So we just opened that door up together and we're like, okay, this is a trauma, right? This is still a pain that was affecting her and her fertility um, and ultimately blocking her from something that she really wanted was to have a healthy child. So, you know, just kind of asked her like, okay, think about some ideas. What are something that you would like to do? So her and her husband talked together and they decided they wanted to get matching tattoos. They like designed it, they drew it out. They decided that they were gonna do that to honor the life of that child. Um, and they planned it all out and everything. And um, then the next time that we had a meeting together, she said, Kyria, I'm pregnant. Um, so of Aww. course now she has super happy, healthy baby boy. He's like <laughs> over one years old. And, yeah. Um, smooth pregnancy and all that. And what was interesting about that is that they didn't actually even end up getting the tattoos, but they went through the process, right? Like they mm -hmm. brainstormed together, they drew it out, they thought about it. Um, they went through the healing cycle. And that's just, you know, one example of how somebody can combine art or creativity um, with for them, you know, their spirituality, if that resonates, you know, with, with the client. And then they were able to heal. Mm. It's so, it's such a great example of you know, art helps us metabolize our, our pain. You know, I, I, sometimes I have these images of, I'm always thinking like, what does art do? Like, how can I compare this? I think it's sometimes like if without art, it's like, we're trying to swallow a hamburger whole and then our body doesn't know what to do with it. So it like sticks it somewhere and then we can't like utilize any of the useful parts of it. And does get eliminated correctly, you know, all these pieces, but art is kind of like, it helps us like chew. It helps us pull apart and reorganize those, mm -hmm. those molecules in a way that it can serve us. And, um, in a way that really nothing else can, it just accesses our brain in a different way. And I think that's a really beautiful example. Um, and I, and I think you touched on something, really important too, that there's something about um, 
ancient wisdom and ritual and cultural practices that honor our whole beings in a way that maybe more modern medicine doesn't. And it also as like a woman experiencing like traditional or um, like modern medicine, mm -hmm. I, I think we're not really taught how much how much stress and emotional upheaval and trauma impacts our physiology. And especially mm -hmm. as women, like our bodies will will not will actively try to not get get us pregnant if it thinks that we're in danger. Like mm -hmm. things will change in our hormones and our physiology. And mm -hmm. um and you can't just like write a prescription to just fix the hormones. Like you actually have to help the woman feel safe, mm -hmm. <laughs> like get to that place of, of feeling safe enough so that her body feels safe enough to bring a child into the world. And I, so I think fertility is a, a really interesting example um, in a place to apply, you know, the arts. That's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, there's it's really a, a question in there. It just was a diatribe. No. <laughs> it, it's important. I mean, fertility, but you know, even like weight loss, which is like so common, something that people are really working on. You know, and just thinking of like one of my clients who lost over a hundred pounds, and you know, she um she actually is a school teacher and an incredible incredible woman. And for her, like gardening was her thing, and hiking, mm. and just like creating art in her garden. And it really comes back to that sense of joy, right? So again, recognizing that inflammation or like stress is at the root of all evil. It's also important, like without any inflammation, we, we wouldn't be able to survive. So a little bit, but all good things in balance, right? So just recognizing like for her, at least to lose, you know, over a hundred pounds, she didn't go to the gym. Like we didn't do any intense, like wild must run a marathon thing. She was gardening, she was hiking, she was practicing gratitude, you know, just those sorts of things. So that's why it doesn't necessarily have to be hard whatever people are healing from i mean the healing journey is challenging in and of itself but like welcoming in the joy of our creativity and it's systemic right beyond just the healthcare. i mean i used to be a public school teacher i know that um, there's a lot more room for the arts to be valued in our culture and our society and our school system so it's not surprising that um it's not yet as valued as it could be in the healthcare system but you all are working hard to change that so thank hey, you man. We're working on it. <laughs> One day at a time. Yeah. yeah. I think oftentimes when you're the one responsible for making sure others are are getting joy and creating, we forget to do it ourselves. So I'm curious mm -hmm. what your favorite art form is and the yeah. last time you did it for yourself. Yeah, great question. Um, my, my dad died at the beginning of this year. So to focus on like my own healing through that, I signed up for a pottery class again, and I used to throw a lot and it was something that brought me such joy. And then I started to get very busy and doing very important things like working and accounting and all those things that matter so much more than art. And it was like, you know, um, clearly that's not true, but just sometimes my grandma would always say that the urgent displaces the important. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I went back to the important things and like enjoying life. So um, I was actually over at a friend's house. and I was like, oh, my gosh, I miss pottery so much. I wish that I could do it. But blah, 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 you know, all these excuses. And she's like, well, why don't you just do it? Like, just sign up. And I was like, oh, yeah, it was just this light bulb um, that went off. Like, I could just sign up. So I've been throwing again. And it feels so good just to, you know, for me being on the wheel and just feeling that and, you know, a lot of art is a metaphor for life, but like with pottery, you know, if somebody's throwing on the wheel, it's all about being centered. Yeah. And being balanced and like feeling that and then how amazing to create something um, with my own hands. It just feels really, really powerful and, and beautiful. And like I can do anything in the world. So that's something that I um, really love to do is one of my favorites and dance, of course. I mean, there's so many, but currently pottery is, is where my heart's at. I oh. love when you said, oh, yeah, I can just do that. Like, <laughs> that's the, I think the I'm point. I'm an adult. Yeah, <laughs> like, it is, it literally <laughs> is that easy to just create and do some art. Like, you just mm -hmm. grab a, you can grab a pencil and do something, you know? Like, you don't need to spend a ton of money and a ton of time to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. You wouldn't happen to have anything nearby that you could show us any of your pottery, do you? Oh, um, <laughs> we I just stared. But, you can edit it out while you run through your house picking up pottery pieces. 
I mean, I do have pottery. Uh, I could show you this. I got this in Korea. This is hey, Zen. Let me, let me make this bigger so we can all see it. Make sure you're. This is oh, wait, let me get this out of here. Do you see this? Cute. Oh. I can't say that I made this, but I bought it in Korea when I was traveling. And Zen Mushu like, obliterates um, obstacles, essentially. Aww. They used to find them um, in tombs and like gravestones, which is a little bit more morbid, but like a, a very strong protector. And so he just hangs out with me on my desk in case I get a really scary email or, you know, <laughs> a modern day <laughs> threat, something like that. You use it as a stress ball and eventually you crack it. <laughs> <laughs> Not do, not squeeze. do not yes. squeeze the pottery. Do not squeeze the pottery. It's no. a good idea, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very cool. I know. Um, we had, when we talked before the interview that you wanted to um, bring us through a guided meditation. Yeah. Which I'm very excited about. Um, mm -hmm. can, can, we, can we take a quick break and then maybe come back and do a guided meditation? Teach us, <laughs> teach us how to do it and kind of the benefits of doing them? Yeah. Yeah, we were going to go through balancing the hormones. So yeah. Ooh, yeah. I need yes. that. Let's do it. So get ready, everybody. Grab your piece of pottery and we'll be right back after <laughs> this little break. Whether you consider yourself a musician or not, music is all around us and it affects our everyday lives. Whether it's background music influencing our shopping habits in a store, organ music adding the vibe to a baseball game, or a playlist convincing us to keep going on that last mile of a run. I'm Mindy Peterson, host of the podcast Enhanced Life with Music, where we take a holistic look at the power of music in our everyday lives through the lens of science and health, sports and entertainment, business and education. You can find me and Enhanced Life with Music at mpetersonmusic.com slash podcast or wherever you get your audio. Unleash the power of music. Medical professionals are burning out at an alarming rate. Burnout can cause health workers to feel hopeless, trapped, helpless, worthless, depressed, sleepless, and tired. By joining the Hearts Need Art Gratitude Grams program, medical staff receive a personalized email and video from a musician, an artist, or writer once a week that includes a message of thanks, an encouraging song, uplifting poem, or a simple art activity. After watching their Gratitude Gram, participants report feeling more hopeful, empowered, energized and appreciated. If you are or know a healthcare worker that would like to receive free gratitude grams, please visit heartsneedart.org. We're back. We're back. Talking about art and healing. We're about to learn about um, guided meditations, which I'm very excited about. Take it away. Okay. So if it's comfortable for everyone, close your eyes, unless you're listening to this while driving, we keep your, keep your eyes open. <laughs> you're not responsible if you close your eyes while you're driving. <laughs> Correct. All right, so eyes closed. We'll go ahead, if you're sitting down, you can have your feet nice and comfortable on the ground or legs cross-legged. You can do this laying down. You can do this in any sort of position that you want. But wherever you are, try and have your spine nice and tall and nice and straight. And then we'll just take about a minute or two. We're just going to go through some of the major hormone glands in the body and bring some breath and awareness there. So we'll start at the top and we'll bring our hands actually to the top of our head. And we're just going to do a little tapping. This is kind of like EFT or some tapping as well as meditation. So we're going to inhale at the top of our head. Some of us think of this as our crown chakra. Big breath in and out. So up at the top of our head, we are stimulating our pituitary gland, which is kind of like the king gland of so many of the different hormones in the body. And our hormones are our endocrine system, which are kind of like little messengers that help so many different processes go throughout the body. So down here, kind of like our third eye area or in between our eyebrows, we're going to move our hands down kind of onto our forehead and just give yourself a nice little massage, just tap, tap, tap. Here we're stimulating the pineal gland, which is really important for that sleep hormone, which many of us know as melatonin. That helps us to rest and heal and repair, especially at nighttime. So take a deep breath in and out. Beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna go down here to our thyroid. So tapping our neck. <clears throat> we have this gland that's shaped like a butterfly. 
around our neck area or Adam's apple area for some of us. And our thyroid is really, really important for metabolism and things like depression and body temperature and even digestion. We have our thyroid stimulating hormone here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a deep breath in and out. And then we're gonna move our hands down to our thymus, which is kind of like in like our heart area. So our chest, you can give yourself a little tapping there. And this is where, especially in adolescence, a lot of the white blood cells go to learn kind of like what is friend or what is foe, to learn about autoimmune diseases or to learn about different infections, things like that. But sometimes our body gets confused and then there can be something like an autoimmune disease. So we're just gonna give our thymus some love as we take a deep breath in and out. And we're gonna go ahead and move down Kind of like at the very bottom of our rib cage, we have <clears throat> our pancreas area here. So we have insulin and glucagon, right? So people who are focusing on balancing their blood sugars, really, really important. Take a deep breath in and out. Okay. And then let's go ahead and give our stomach and our spleen some love. You can move your hands to the right side of the body. You've got your liver and your gallbladder over here on the right side, stomach and spleen on the left side. And then go ahead and massage over to the other side, wherever you are. If your hands are on the right, bring them over to the left. On the left, bring them over to the right. Just helping out with our digestion a little bit. And then we're going to go all the way down. <clears throat> towards our sex organs. So we have, you know, estrogen and testosterone and you could just do the tapping. You might not be able to see us in the camera, but that's okay. You're just gonna tap around your womb area, around your hips, progesterone, all those fertility hormones that we were talking about earlier. Take a deep breath in and out. And then the last but not least, you're gonna put your hands and fists around your back and Underneath your adrenals glands, you have adrenals, right? Kind of sounds like adrenaline or your stress hormone. So those are by your kidneys. And if you can kind of tap with your hands on your back to stimulate those adrenal glands, we can't live without our stress hormones. We really need cortisol and adrenaline and norepinephrine and all of these things, but we need them in balance, right? And some of us are just a little too stressed and our adrenal glands are running over time. So we're gonna take one last big deep breath in here and out. And go ahead and bring your hands back to your lap if you're sitting down or maybe have your hands on your chest if you're laying down, wherever feels comfortable to you. If you're able to have your feet on the ground or if you're laying down, you can stretch your legs out nice and straight. You can bring your shoulders back down your spine and wherever you are sitting or laying, Think about having your head up nice and tall and straight. And we'll just take a few deep breaths here to stimulate all of that. See how you feel in your body. If you can feel the tapping sensation or the blood moving around, the hormones being balanced. Maybe just have a smile on your face for gratitude for all these incredible organs and body systems. And we'll take one more deep breath in together. And as we exhale, we can gently open our eyes and come back in, knowing that we can always return to tapping any part of our body that may need it in the future. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> Shall we take you off the screen? Do you need to go backstage? <laughs> Yeah, that was really good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Mm. I meditate probably three times a day. I do like little seven minute meditations, like after mm -hmm. big, like, oh, that's like my treat. Like, okay, I finished that. I'm going to meditate. Or, yes. and there are times where I feel like I, I slept for like four hours, like, <laughs> because I get like so into it. And I lay on yeah. my little acupuncture mat and I'm mm. like, having a whole experience. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where that came from, but uh, yeah. yeah. What do you have, or do you have um, some advice for people who are not not engaging in the arts 
to start doing it like a simple something mm -hmm. that they can do like this meditation obviously you can replay this as many times as you want and that was just a few minutes and i feel like my mood has completely changed mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good question i mean i think it really helps to have a team and you were commenting on this earlier in the introduction but like a friend right or an ally um a coach you know uh, a partner who can hold you accountable, something like that can really, really help. And just baby steps. Like we're all about baby steps in our practice with the clients that we work with is just like small baby steps. So if somebody, you know, wants to tune into that creative power, then just picking something, right? Like maybe something that brought them a lot of joy when they were younger, whether it's like crochet or needlework or gardening or hiking or painting or you know, whatever it might be, pottery, it can be anything. Um, and just, trying it right i mean there's also youtube university people can like do things online but it really does help to have somebody and i've noticed that you know even just like my clients if i give it to them like a like a homework assignment or like a job and then i check in the next week with them then they're likely to do it so it's okay or like i signed up for a pottery class so i have a teacher who's expecting me every week um something like that to have accountability helps a lot mm. yeah it's like a gym partner like someone who can motivate you to do that. It's the same thing, really. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. We have a question from the invisible audience. <laughs> and the, the question is kind of similar to what I was just asking, but how do you approach clients who don't have any experience with the arts who potentially object based on simply not knowing the value of it yet? Ooh, it's hard for me to all of my clients have some experience with the mm. arts. I think it's just how we define art, right? Mm. So even if it's meditation or yoga, um, or some people really love going to the gym, that can be their art. Um, how do you approach clients who don't have any experience with the art? So from my perspective, everybody has experience. To be alive is an art form, yeah. right? Cooking for some people is an art form. Um, so I think empowering, and I, I have done this for some clients, just empowering them that they're already an artist, right? Like they are already doing it. They just have a, a spoon as their, you know, medium or, or their secret weapon. Um, mm. Potentially object based on simply not knowing the value yet. It speaks for itself, right? For some people, <clears throat> comedy is it right so just like watching something on netflix can like make them happy and then we're human right so when we feel the positive benefits or when we see those changes it becomes um yeah it just becomes a system in and of itself to keep doing it because it's so rewarding so um for somebody who might not have a lot of experience in the arts i think um you know working with a friend or a coach or a partner or somebody who can encourage you that you're already doing it and then just finding what brings you that joy which sounds so cheesy sometimes, right? Like, oh, like what brings you joy? Just do that. But really like what's that flow state where you're just doing something and you don't even recognize. For some people, it's the art of decluttering. Yeah. So just find like what works for them. Um, and then the value should just be self-explanatory where they feel good and <laughs> they feel happy. And that it just becomes like their safe space. Because I work with some clients who really struggle with so many different autoimmune diseases and are on so many different medications or even strong things like morphine but then they find that place that becomes their safe space to to just enjoy their life because that's what it's all about at the end of the day right like we want to heal to be able to enjoy our life to live longer happier healthier lives um with more art hopefully so does that Thanks. answer the question i think it does yeah, that's good i'm happy i'm happy with that answer <laughs> okay well, thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything else you would like to share that you want to make sure people know and, and how can they learn more about you? Um, I guess just the closing thing would be that it it's not just like a an extracurricular activity, you know, like art and healthcare. It's not just like a bonus, um, even though that's kind of how it's treated right now. I think that if all of us are just, especially patients, you know, or people who are really struggling with their health and we all have at different points in our own journey but just taking that ownership and recognizing that it's actually really a necessity to uh, feel that power and to feel those benefits of being in that creative space there's literally so much research that talks about the healing power of art or even just those the research articles that i i love these ones because 
oh no, that's a whole nother story. But um, of like seeing a view while healing, right? Versus just looking at a concrete block, like seeing nature or seeing mm-hmm. beauty. So recognizing that um, can be really, really powerful. And it's okay to reach out for help or to reach up for help, as I like to say, not just reaching out, um, but actually reaching up to somebody who can help is really, really helpful. Um, and then on my website, we have a free webinar. If somebody wants to learn more about this, it's just a free webinar. They're welcome to check it out. Our website is kyriahealth.com. So K-Y-R-I-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com. And there's a lot of free goodies on there that, or if, even if people want like more meditations or recipes or creative ideas, they can check that out. And and we're here. To, we're happy to support. We work with people all over the world. So um, not just Hawaii, but everywhere. Very cool. Thank you. I'm going to go on and look. I want more meditations. Right. <laughs> you're, um, Kyria, you're wonderful. And I'm so glad that Thanks. we uh, connected and you were able to come on and chat with us today. It's been really helpful. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be here. And thank you all for the work that you're doing. It's, it's really essential. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Well, make sure you're watching, liking, subscribing, all the things, wherever you're doing all the things. And uh, we thank you for watching and listening, and we will see you next time. Keep creating, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast produced by Hearts Need Art, creative support for patients and caregivers, in partnership with the National Organization for Arts and Health. You can help others learn about the healing power of the arts by subscribing, sharing, and reviewing the podcast wherever you listen or watch. The podcast is hosted by Richard Wilmore, co-hosted by Constanza Rader. Our theme song, Songbird, is written and performed by Natalie Lane. Visit heartsneedart.org to learn how you can support our mission to create joy with people facing life-altering health challenges. Join us next week to learn more ways you can create arts for the health of it. The views expressed on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of Heartstein Art, their staff, board members, or other affiliates. All content is created for informational purposes only. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice or to diagnose and treat any health condition. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health professional with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you heard.